My name is Burgess Meredith. I've got a secret. You think you can guess what it is. Arid cream deodorant. The deodorant that is 53% more effective in keeping underarms dry and odorless. Present. I've got a secret. Sorry, Gary Moore. Thank you very much. Well, now, pull up a window and join the party, will you? This is us again. Here we are with another session of I've Got a Secret, a Snoopy sort of a game in which we reveal the awful truth about some very nice people just for fun. Tonight, we have information about the private lives of some interesting folk, which they're going to try to keep secret from our panel. And now, I would like you to meet our panel. First, from the motion pictures, a very lovely and delightful young lady, Miss Jane Meadows. Then, one of the brightest wits we, I personally have ever encountered, Mr. Henry Morgan. <laughs> and the glamorous blonde young lady on the end, Miss Faye Emerson. That is our... P oh. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> it would appear that I have forgotten one of our panel members, Mr. Bill Cullen, but just in case you think I have, uh, Cass, will you put your glasses on? Shall we all rise? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Bill. Happy birthday to you. I want to tell you, Bill, on this occasion of your 52nd birthday, <laughs> we wanted to get together and give you a small token of our esteem and affection. Let's get a real nice shot of that on camera three, see? It's happy birthday, Bill, and it has his glasses right there on the table. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday, old man, and I do mean old man. Much, <laughs> See, I don't know what to say. Do I hold this through the... Well, no, we just rented this. We have to get it back. <laughs> <laughs> After the show, I'll tell you, after the show, we'll have a party and we'll play Pin the Tail on Henry Morgan. Right? All righty. <laughs> <laughs> Now, let's get on with things here. In just a moment, I'm going to introduce you to a lady with tonight's first series. And to be sure, it is time for us to play our game. You fellas ready for I've Got a Secret, Henry? Bill, all Jane, right. everyone, all? All right. Then let's welcome our first contestant to I've Got a Secret. Do come in, please. <laughs> now, will you tell our panning panel what your name is, please, and where you are from? My name is Mrs. Adrian Markham, and I'm from Logan, West Virginia. Mrs. Markham, and she is from Logan, West Virginia, and she has a secret. Now, Mrs. Markham, here is how we play the game. Each panelist will get two questioning periods of 15 seconds each, but the cl clock will only time the actual questions. That means that we take time out for audience reaction or for discussion if necessary. When a panelist's time is up, he will hear this miserable sound. And I will pay our guest $10 and turn the game over to the next questioner. Twice around the panel for a total loss of $80, and the game is over. Now, Mrs. Markham, if you will whisper your secret to me, we will reveal it at the same time to the folks at home. <laughs> you certainly must be. Now, to help classify this secret panel, I will tell you that it concerns something that she is, and we will start with uh, Birthday Cullen, please. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Markham, this uh, thing that you are, is there anything unique or unusual about it? Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, if, in order to be what you are, would, would it, could it be considered some sort of a special accomplishment of some kind? Mm-hmm. Well, in order to be this, did you have to do something? <laughs> Uh, in other words, to accomplish, accomplish this thing that you accomplished, was there any particular skill or talent involved? In uh, no well, special was... training was necessary, but... <laughs> but it is unusual. In other words, if I were to do this, would it get in the papers or something? Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, this is a difficult kind of an accomplishment. Would it help me to know where you were when you accomplished this? <laughs> No, I don't think so. Was this accomplished in your... Was this what, Mr. Cullen? I was going to ask if it was accomplished in her work. 
No, no. Uh, $10 down and $70 to go. Ms. Martin, let me move you over just a little bit this mm -hmm. way so you get a better shot at that microphone. All right. Now, uh, Miss Jane Meadows, please. Mrs. Markham, did you need the assistance of any other people to become the thing that you are? Yes. Yes? Did you, by any chance, win a medal or a ribbon or a loving cup or anything for becoming this? No. Didn't win a ribbon or a medal? No. Or well, did you gain anything tangible? You did. Would it help me to know what you gained? Yes. yes. This thing that you gained, would you be likely to keep it in the house? Oh. <laughs> yes? Yes. Would you display it in your living room, for instance? Yes. You would. Would you keep it on the wall or the mantelpiece? Uh-huh, I think so. No? It says she hardly thinks so, and I agree with her. Would I be eligible to win something like this? You uh, might. I might? Mm -hmm. uh... But not right now. Twenty dollars down and sixty dollars to go. <laughs> Mr. Henry Markham, please. Uh, Mrs. Markham, owing to the loud guffaw when uh, Cullen asked you uh, whether he could do it, is this something only a woman could do? Well, I think so. <laughs> have anything to do with uh, having children? Well, it could have. Uh, and it does. I think we have to say that it does. Oh, it does. Yes. Does this have anything to do with the kind of children you had? <laughs> I don't mean kind, I mean, uh... Yes, uh... <laughs> All one-headed people in this family. Mrs. <laughs> Markham, I'm going off on a sideways thing here, but uh, has it anything to do with uh, how many children you had? No. Uh, it has to do with your children. Oh, yes. Well, Our children are involved, although uh, not specifically mentioned. Oh. Uh. <laughs> No. Oh, oh, oh. uh, yes, that's uh, a secret inside of a secret. Comes out of the kind of. Uh, you, you, uh, uh, should I find out how many children you have? Would that help any? No. Is might it be. one child? That's immaterial. The, the, the thing. No time. Well, it's not. I Thirty dollars. What are you going to say, here. Henry? No, it's all right. I just as soon. All right. Thirty dollars down and fifty dollars. To go and we go to a very baffled looking Miss Fair. Yes, indeed. I haven't deleted it all. Mrs. Markham, does it have anything to do uh, uh, to whom your children are related? That's not a very good sentence, Frank. You know what I mean? <laughs> no? no? They're not related to anybody famous? It uh, involves relatives of her children. Relatives of her children, which I gather has something to do with your husband, perhaps? No. Uh, her children don't have anything to do with her husband? <laughs> <laughs> indirectly. Indirectly. Yes. Oh. Uh, indirectly. But your children are an integral part of this whole secret. I would be interested in knowing. Her children are very much involved. Yes, there's $40 down and $40 to go. Miss Emerson looked like she just got an idea, but it's too late. Bill Cullen, this is your last chance. Does this have anything to do, Miss Markham, with something your children might have done? Or... <laughs> The thing uh, that your children might have done that uh, is involved with this secret, uh, is, is it in itself unusual? Uh, well, there's nothing unusual precisely in what their children did, but there is... Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> I was the question. Keep quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you? What's your science? Does it have anything to do... <clears throat> Guess not, Bill. No. <laughs> I just had a sudden uh, talk about flashes. I don't like this one. Um, does it possibly have to do with uh, the, uh, a relative of yours, uh, a, a direct relative of yours, generation-wise? Oh, I'll put it in plain words. Uh, are you more than a mother to somebody? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, you can't possibly be what I'm thinking of. Uh, Time is fleeting. You better think it. Are you somebody's grandmother, by any chance? Yes, she is. Oh, that's, not, that's not the complete secret. I'm going to forfeit our money because time is running short. Mrs. Markham is understandably the youngest grandmother in the U.S. of A. She is 29 years old. Oh, so she is. She was... She was 28 at the time she became a grandmother. How old were you when you were married, Mrs. Markham? 
Harley 14. Harley 14? How old was your daughter when she was married? Harley 14. Harley 14? Well, there's $80 to split between you two Harley 14s and give our love <laughs> to the younger generation. Thanks so much for being with us. Good night. Tell us, please, your name and where you're from. My name is Fred Blessé from Richmond, Virginia. Fred Blessé. All right, now, Mr. Blessé, remember twice around the panel and they have lost the game. If you'll whisper your secret to me, the folks out there would like to know what it is. To help you in this, I will say only that it concerns something that he did, and I think we will start with Miss Faye Emerson, please. Mr. Blessé, is this something you did recently? Yes, fairly recently. Is it something only a man could do? I believe it'd be possible for a woman to do it. Would I be liable to do it? Uh, not liable to, but uh, well, I'd say no. You was it a happy liable. event, Mr. Blessé? Pardon me? Was it a happy event? Or happy... Uh, yes, it was for me. Was for you? Yes. Was there somebody else involved in it? Yes, there was. Did it happen in this country? The answer to that's going to have to be no. No, it did not. Ten dollars down, seventy dollars to go, Mr. Bill Cullen, please. Uh, did it happen in Europe by any chance, Mr. Blessing? No, it didn't. Did it happen in uh, Korea? Yes, it did happen in Korea. Did it have to do with the uh, career of yours in the service? Yes, it did. Uh, is it some uh, heroic accomplishment for which you might be uh, rewarded or commended? Yes. Uh, could it possibly be that you have received the highest of all uh, awards? In the... No. Will you finish the, finish the question? <coughs> the, high, you mean the, the highest what? award of all is Silver Star. No. Uh, no, <laughs> no, the congressional medal. No, no, uh, not so. $20 down and $60 to go, Miss Jane Meadows, please. Uh, Mr. Blasse, were you in the Air Corps when you did this? Yes, I was. Does it have something to do with uh, shooting down a plane? Yes, it does. It does? Does it have to do with the number you shot down? Yes. Do you hold the record for shooting down of communist planes by any chance? You have to guess the number, madame. The number any of... number to me is great. Is it over five? Yes, it is. Is it over 10? No. No. Is it nine? Yes, that's precisely what it is. <laughs> it sure didn't take long. Well, I'll tell you, I want to tell you the story about this fabulous guy. We cheated a little bit. Actually, he is still Captain Blessé of the United States Air Force, has had more missions than anyone else in that service, 233 missions. He has shot down nine MiGs, one LA-9, has had one probable uh, 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 kill on a MiG, and three definite damages. And he... Uh, did one tour of duty, came home, and at his own insistence, went back for a second tour of duty, during which he shot down the nine MiGs and got all the other things that I tell you about. Quite a guy, huh? Now, <laughs> uh, Fred, uh, what, what is your duty now? What are you doing currently? I'm an instructor at our combat crew training uh, base at Nellis Air Force Base in Nevada. Uh, jets? Yes, F-86. That, that jet uh, fl uh, flying uh, in the service must be quite a good deal for a young guy, huh? If you qualify, it is. I think a very good deal. Well, what are the qualifications? Well, you must be unmarried, and I think uh, 19 to 26 and a half years and single. Mm-hmm. Well, it was time. just great having you here with us. If any of you young men are interested in a career that will do you well, you might do a whole lot worse than to do as Captain Blessé suggests, get in touch with the United States Air Force. Maybe you'll make the jet outfit if you're good enough. Captain, thanks a million. Good night. Thank you. Thanks so much for being <laughs> Well, now I have been asked to say something about National Brotherhood Week, and I don't know what can be said about brotherhood. It's so worthwhile, maybe even repeating the old saws would be worth doing something. This is National Brotherhood Week. You know what brotherhood it is? This week is set aside so that you can think about it and remind yourself that you should be thinking about it and reminding yourself about it all year long. Enough said. And now it's time to have our panel go to work on tonight's special guest, ladies and gentlemen, one of America's truly fine actors, Mr. Burgess Meredith. All right, now, panel, before we go to work on Mr. Meredith's secret, we'll play the game as before, except that in this case, the money, any money's won, will go to Mr. Meredith's favorite charity. Burgess, if you'll whisper your secret, please. 
something that he has, and we will start with Miss Jane Meadows, please. Something that you have. Have you had this a long time, Mr. Meredith? No, I haven't. No, you haven't. I, Is it something it. valuable? Uh, you'll have to define what valuable is. Well, it, it isn't... Under visible. a million dollars. It's under a million dollars? It is something uh, tangible, is it? Yes. It is. Oh, yeah. Could I hold it in my hand? Something small? <laughs> Yes. Is it made of metal by any chance? No. no, no. Is it, uh, was it once alive? Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, once alive. Ten dollars down, seventy dollars to go. Mr. Henry looking askance type Morgan. No, I get sucked in sometimes. I make up my mind ahead of time and then uh, blow the whole thing. Is, is this something you have with you now, Mr. Meredith? Uh, this moment? Yes. Yes, it is. Are you wearing it? I'm wearing it. Is it a toupee? Yeah. <laughs> but that isn't the answer. Oh, of course not. I was just... No, no, uh... no. <laughs> I think... Are you wearing... I think it. we were almost late tonight. Yeah, I think... <laughs> Is this... Are you wearing somebody else's toupee? No. <laughs> are you wearing one of the wrong color or what? Uh, no, wait a minute. Gee. What could be... Thing? Oh, is it a toupee that's instead of being in front, it's in back? Uh, no, that would be something else, except the two. Uh, am I supposed to find out, um, which part of, of... <laughs> <laughs> Which part of his noggin is covered? <laughs> something like that. $20 down and $60 Thanks, to go. Uh, Miss Faye Emerson, please. There's no possibility I could return this whole ugly thing to Mr. Morgan. <laughs> I don't know where to start. <laughs> Burgess, you are wearing a toupee? Yes, But Faye. you don't need a toupee. Uh, ah, that uh -huh. is true. But you well, are wearing... Can I see it? Yes, mm, not after, right now. Afterwards, because this is all involved. Well, are you wearing it backwards? No, I don't think uh, so. And it belongs to you? <laughs> no, I just borrowed it. <laughs> no, I said that. Henry, are you wearing you, false eyebrows? Excuse or? me, uh, Faye, just a moment. Henry asked if the toupee belonged to somebody else. We took that you meant was somebody famous, somebody well-known. Actually, it is not his property. It is a rented job. Let's put it that way. Oh. So I own it till I... Yes, until you... As long as I pay for it. Is it visible? Uh, yes, it's visible. Yeah. $30 down and $50 to go, Mr. Bill Collins. Gee. Would I be interested in finding, Burgess, why you're wearing this toupee? Well, you would, but it wouldn't help. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, thanks a lot. Uh, I think it would, don't you, Burgess? Why I was if, if wearing... If you knew why you were wearing it, uh... He'd know the secret, wouldn't he? You know him better than I do. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you wearing the toupee to hide something untoward that happened to you? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, is it some? Is it? Are you wearing it to cover something that you don't want to be exposed? Is that the? <laughs> no. 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 Are you wearing it because? Is your barber? Wearing it, I'm on the. <laughs> Is your barber angry you with you, right? <laughs> what? You're wearing a toupee wo uh, made of the hair that Gary doesn't use. <laughs> <laughs> That's hardly it. This toupee is on your head. Yes. Forty dollars down and forty dollars to go, Miss Jane Meadows. Well, now your secret is something you have. Well, we know you have a toupee. That's is it, right. We want to find out why you're wearing this toupee. Is that yes. what we want to find yes. out? Yes. And you're not wearing it to hide anything. We didn't say that. Oh, we you said it wasn't hiding uh, anything untoward that happened to him, like I an accident see. of any sort. Well, do you always wear a toupee on television? No, I never have before, but it may be an idea. It's very attractive. It's the part that has the little bangs, is it, in the front there? Yeah. Is that got the toupee? Let's not talk shop, girls. Oh, well, if they've got it, can I pass it on to Henry? Because I don't know what it is. Buzz the buzzer, and we lose another $10. <laughs> There's $10 down to Henry Morgan. Well, I know I'm not supposed to uh, do it this way. I was told before when I did it not to do it, so I'll do it again. I'll say just told me. <laughs> she worked it out. It's because of a party play. <laughs> well, that happens too, but that isn't it. We're getting just further and further. Well, why do you keep field. giving me those? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. I got another idea. <laughs> I'm on the point of forfeiting. Wait a minute, I got another idea. Did, did you have your head shaved? Uh, sh uh uh, shaved is uh, a well, bit Well, did extreme. you have a haircut that was very short for something? 
<laughs> that's, that's the secret. That's, that's it, it, in secret. other words. He is wearing two pairs to cover his two cups. Must I take it off? Yeah. My yeah. oh, God. Oh, yeah, you see? <laughs> Man. That's not going to Oh, help. you're playing Ernie Pyle, yeah. aren't you? Well, I figured for some reason he was getting all these jobs. <laughs> Burgess, what is the part that, you're, that you got this uh, hairdo for? Uh, silver whistle. I'm doing it down in Florida next week. Why it's you... not happy as Larry. No, no, it is. I told you whistle which opens in Florida. Well... Yeah. Take your skin with you and go, and your money too, huh? Right, Thank thanks you, Burgess, so very much for being okay. with us. Good luck. <laughs> that is quite a testimonial for Mr. Lewis Fetter, who is the uh, gentleman who made the wig. None of you could tell which, si which part of it was a toupee. Mr. <laughs> Fetter is the nation's number one dealer in hair goods, toupees, and so forth. He whipped this up just for Meredith tonight. Can you tell us what your name is, sir, and where you're from? I am a patrolman jealous Jane Reggie of the Hempstead Police Department in Hempstead, New York. Patrolman de Reggie of the Hempstead Police Department. Now, let's... Oh, by the way, any money that the patrolman de Reggie wins tonight, he wants it known that it, any money he wins is going to the building of a new church, Our Lady of Loretto, out in Hempstead. Now then, patrolman de Reggie, if you will tell me what your secret is. <laughs> I can hardly wait for this one. Henry, you start off on this, will you? Well, you didn't even give me a clue. Oh, the clue. Well, it concerns something that happened to him. Let's put it that way. Well, apparently what happened to you, uh... I never said to anybody, patrolman. <laughs> Whatever happened to you, patrolman, <laughs> officer? <laughs> there is he. It's sort of funny, uh, apparently. Did it happen recently? Yes. Is it something that could only happen to a policeman? No. Well, as the, as the secret is stated, it could only happen to a policeman, though. I see. Uh, and you uh, asked if it was funny. I say it was funny to everybody but Patrolman de Ritchie. <laughs> well, what, what I want to know, is, was, it, was it just funny because he's a policeman? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Was it something that somebody did to you? Not to his person, no. no. That's it. Well, I mean, there's somebody else involved. <laughs> yes, there's yes. somebody else involved. Ten dollars down, seventy dollars to go. Miss Faye Emerson, please. Well, officer, did this happen in your line of duty? Yes. Were you wearing your uniform at the time? Yes. Do you walk a beat? No. Do you ride in a patrol car? Yes. Did you arrest somebody? No. He has arrested I people, have but not, that's not the secret. Uh, did somebody run into you? Twenty dollars down and sixty dollars to go. You've got about ten seconds, panel. Uh, did your arches fall suddenly by any chance? <laughs> no, did you have something stolen from you? That's true. Was oh. it something that you can carry in your pocket? <laughs> Was no. it something that you can, uh, carry in yourself? Was it something that carries you? Yes. yes. And it was stolen? Yes. yes. Has it been recovered yet? Yes. Because yes. I bought one the other day and I'm worried. Uh, <laughs> Did you have your car stolen, Patrolman de Reggie, by any chance? You were saved by the bell. Well, quick, quickly, I'll try to recap this thing. Patrolman de Reggie went in to, uh, to uh, uh, answer a burglar alarm, left his car running at the curb. When it came out, the car right, was right. gone. <laughs> Sit down, just one minute. One thing I want to ask you. What did you tell your boss when you called him up to report? I said, well, I tell him I lost my car. <laughs> Imagine the guy having to call the desk and say, somebody stole my police car. <laughs> You only win $20, but it's worth it. I'm going to give you 80 I feel sorry. <laughs> well, uh, that's all the uh, time we have for our guests and their secrets tonight. In just a moment, I'm going to tell you about the famous celebrity who will be third to greet by our panel on next week.